Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. As always, I have another golf ball review for you today. This one we've been waiting on a while, and I know, you know, the previous uh, generation of this golf ball has been blowing up on my channel, and a lot of people have been watching it, so I know there's a good demand for it. We are finally here at the tour level for MaxFly. This is the MaxFly Tour CG. Um, this, of course, you know, being the new updated 22, 2022 model. Now on my channel, one of the first golf ball reviews I did. In fact, it actually might have been the first one. Um, it was this golf ball, but it was the previous generation. And it was a really good golf ball. I was really impressed. Um, and a lot of you have seen it and watched it. And, and it's really blown up. And I'm really thankful for that. But it's time to get you some real numbers. That was the one thing. I hadn't actually tested golf balls out at that point with numbers. So I'm excited to give these to you. A lot of you have been asking for them. Let's dive in. So first of all, the design of the golf ball. MaxFly really redid their logo a few years ago with the previous generation. It looked awesome. Everything from that is pretty much the same. MaxFly has that really nice black logo with the big circle on it. And then what I like about what they've done for the new model this year is look at that alignment tool. Really nice, I love that. The two thick lines on the side. This is actually what they've done for all their golf balls if you've seen any of the previous ones. Like I did the straight fly, I did the soft fly, I did the tri fly. They've all gone to this and it really lines up well. I've been using them on the course and it's really easy to put my ball down and line up with it. It's easy to see, it's nice and thick. Love that design, MaxFly has outdone themselves so it's a really well designed golf ball, especially for the modern era. And of course, this is a urethane golf ball that you can get for a very great price. Uh, they're about 35 a dozen, but if you buy two of them, you get them two for 60. So $29.99 basically for a dozen of them, which as a tour golf ball, a urethane three piece is pretty inexpensive. It's hard to find a deal much better than that, especially one that if it performs well and can hang up with those, those big names like Titleist, Callaway, you'd be saving yourself like 15, 20 bucks a dozen if it pans out. So really good price there. Let's go on to the chipping and putting green. Let's see how we did out there, and then we'll dive into those numbers. All right, so I'm out on the chipping and putting green with the MaxFly Tour CG, uh, just the regular model there. And I gotta say that one thing I hope this ball really does well is I hope it does have a good amount of checkup just because it is trying to compete in a very difficult market with a lot of these tour balls. And being that it is as cheap as it is, despite that, um, you always have to make a sacrifice somewhere. So I wonder if that were is gonna be that is not the case. It actually has a really good amount of checkup, um, very healthy amount. It's not too much. It's not stop on a dime, which trust me that you don't need that as much as you think you do. Um, but the ball is able to uh, definitely check up and have a nice release afterward. There's a good amount of forgiveness there. Now it will spin left or right if you do close the face or open it a little bit on your chips. However, that's one of the reasons I kind of like it because it's right in between that market. It's not super spinny to where it's going to jolt left or jolt right, but it has the perfect amount of checkup to where it's just going to still stop and roll and keep you safe on the green. Moving into the putter. Honestly, it is really fantastic what they've done with the putter here because honestly, they've pulled a Titleist. Uh, somehow they got this golf ball to feel, you know, medium, you know, as far as feels off the iron. But when it comes off the putter, it is soft as butter. Um, there's just a tiny, tiny bit of feedback just to let you know whether or not you hit it off the center. Center hits just spring off the golf club. And even though you can feel off center hits, they spring off the golf club just as much. Um, the putting is just phenomenal. I have not encountered a golf ball yet that um, has really done what Titleist is known for and great at, which is creating a golf ball that feels different when you hit it with the iron and feels just buttery smooth around the greens. Um, that's something that's really underrated and a lot of people really love. And MaxFly, you got to give them some credit. They did a wonderful job there. So the feel all around the green was just phenomenal. It had a good amount of checkup and the putter, honestly, I couldn't find anything wrong with. So really outstanding numbers there from MaxFly. Hopefully they can keep that up in the future. All right, so great results there. Love that. Let's go ahead and dive into these numbers. Now this golf ball has a feel as far as how it comes off the irons, drivers, things like that. It's kind of in the middle there. It's not necessarily a super soft golf ball by any means, but it's not firm or clicky or anything like that. It's balanced. It's right in the middle. You can definitely feel the, the feedback when you hit it, but it's still soft for the most part. So I think most people are going to really enjoy the feel. Let's get into the numbers. Let's start, of course, with the nine iron. Now, most of the time with the nine iron, when you have a tour golf ball, I lose a little bit of speed and everything just because it's usually a little firmer and my short wedges don't don't compress as much as the seven iron, the mid, the hybrids, the driver, things like that. So 
Um, it looks like that might be the case here. So 89.4 on your ball mile per hour speed, 122.5 on your uh, total distance and 115.3. Those, those are very low numbers for my nine iron. Uh, you're gonna lose also a little bit of distance just because of course, when you get a three piece like this with urethane, it's gonna spin more. So it is gonna come back a little bit. It's, you're gonna lose about five, 10 yards just because of the spin alone. So that's to be expected. Um, and then 26.1 on the launch. That's a very high launch. I wish it wouldn't launch that high being a Torrigal ball because if I'm already getting the spin and I'm already losing a little bit of speed and distance, um, I just wish that maybe we could get a little lower launch on there as well. Um, so those numbers are okay. Nothing really that's, that's you know, uh, sparking my interest at the moment, but let's dive into the seven iron, hopefully a little better there. 5,685. Wow, that is really low spinning. That is low spinning for a seven iron. Uh, that's almost a thousand RPM over what my, a or under what my average is. Uh, so that's, that's crazy low. Uh, 106.6, that's respectable. That's just slightly above average. Uh, 161.5, yeah, good number there, absolutely. That's definitely above average. 149.8, above average. And then a 16.5, so that's funny. This one does launch really low. So the seven iron launched really low and the nine iron launched really high. So not a lot of consistency there so far. I wish it was a little more consistent in that regard, but the seven iron numbers were pretty good. So I have nothing to complain about. All right, going into the hybrid now, 4,058 on the spin. That's definitely average for that club. 116.9 on your ball mile per hour speed. That's average. 191.8, that's average. Uh, 177.5, boy, all these are literally right on what my averages are, like right on the center of them. 14.4 on your launch, that's average again. So all those numbers completely average across the board. Uh, so, so far we have the nine iron, which underperformed a little bit, the seven iron, which performed a little better than, than average. And then we have the five hybrid, which has been completely 100% average across everything. So uh, interesting to see how the driver is gonna be at that point. Um, let's dive into that. Uh, so starting with the spin. 2,852 average, 247.6. Now, hold on a second, that's way above average. That is an excellent number with the driver, 135.6, that definitely higher there, awesome, 227. Great number, I love that. And then 15.8, which is actually a pretty high launch for a driver. So I don't know why the driver launched a little higher compared to everything else, um, but it's not uncommon. It actually does happen with quite a few golf balls this way. Uh, but overall, looking at those numbers, the driver performed really well. Maybe that's where I really started to compress the golf ball a little bit better. Maybe this one, maybe the tour is meant for, you know, your 95 to 100 swinger somewhere in there. It might be just because based on that driver number. Uh, but overall, those numbers are really good. So we've kind of got a mixed bag here as far as the whole, the whole result. But let's go ahead real quick before I, I give you my final thoughts. Let's touch on the durability. Durability wise, you can see it's pretty dirty, um, but the golf dot stayed mostly intact. And if you actually just feel the golf ball, if you just feel the outside of it, it still has its coating and there's really not any issue. So yeah, so most of that is just dirt. And honestly, I, it still feels really good. You could definitely continue to use this. Uh, this is after about 60 shots. So I gotta say that's really good. That's pretty close to perfect. I mean, honestly, it performed really well. I think you can definitely get through 18 and maybe even a little bit more with it. So I love that. All right, so final thoughts. Where does that leave us with this? Well, it's a little tough because we got such a mixed bag. Um, if you're, I think it's going to really depend on what kind of swinger you are and what kind of golfer you are as far as your handicap. Um, the tour I think is going to be for guys who, who are more your intermediate slash low handicap guys. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people look at this golf ball and think, oh, you know, it's a budget tour ball. I can get tour level spin without... I still wouldn't recommend it if you're somebody who doesn't strike their irons very well. I mean, if you're still posting scores of 90 and up, it probably ain't gonna be for you because you don't want that much spin. You don't want slices and hooks to be exaggerated like that. Plus, honestly, you need to be swinging pretty fast anyway to get it to do those things. So it's gonna take a little bit better of a golfer to really manipulate this golf ball and get it to do what you want it to do. Um, otherwise, it's gonna be kind of spraying all over on you. Um, I love the durability aspect. I think it's definitely durable. Um, I love the design that Maxfly's done and the driver numbers and the seven iron numbers were great. I love those, especially the driver numbers. Those were phenomenal. Uh, but it's just too much of a mixed bag. There's a lot of golf balls I have that were just consistent and amazing across the board. And the forgiveness on this golf ball ended up just being okay. So I think it definitely is for a more advanced golfer, um, mid swingers and below and, you know, 15 handicap and above. 
probably stay away, unfortunately. The numbers just weren't good enough. You know, I, I tested the MaxFly straight fly and had much better results with it, really performed well. No, I didn't get as much spin around the green with it, but again, spin isn't always a good thing. Sometimes it can be, sometimes it isn't. Um, but overall here, just too much of a mixed bag. I think there are better options out there. Maybe the X will perform a little bit differently, but we'll test that one next. Um, but as always, guys, keep watching to keep saving, keep learning. I appreciate you being here. Until next time.